Welcome to part two of the Scalar 2.4 update. Uh, in the first video, there's a few things missed, so we can go over those now. And we'll do a quick little modulation test where we'll shift from like a C major to a G major. And so let's take a look at what we got here. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, everything looks the same, but uh, there's one important change with this performance button. First of all, let's just grab a um, the C major couple chords. We set up looping, so that's turned on. Sync to our DAW, let's just play our chords. All right, that sounds the same. We click performance, uh, we pick accento and ch keep everything the same. But now if you right click on that performance button, we get a new option, create command mapping, recall playback settings. So what does that mean? It means that we can now uh, map different performances uh, across our controllers. So we can quickly switch and sometimes midway between, uh, midway between the performances. So we get a hybrid new performance. So you're, you're, you have your different performances mapped to your uh, keys or buttons and you play a performance halfway through, you switch to another performance and that all can be recorded and dragged into your DAW. So let's give that a try. Let's click yes. Let's create a new command link here. And I grab my first slider on my keyboard and it automatically maps uh, the first Accento uh, performance to that. Click save. Now let's quickly uh, just select a new performance. Let's go to this performance and let's uh, change up the timing. So, okay, now this performance will be played at half speed. We again go to this button, right click, create a new mapping, yes, and second slider. Now that's mapped to this performance, all performance. Click save. And now just to test it, um, yes, my two sliders are changing the performance and the timing of the performance. And um, how it, it will shift these performances in time according to uh, the beats. So since it's all synced uh, to the beat, if you have a performance that is a very long performance, say like an eight beat long performance, even if you switch, I hit my new uh, mapped controller and switch over to the second performance, it's still going to run through the full eight beats before it's going to switch to the next performance because it keeps everything in time that way. And I tried a few uh, options here, turning off next beat, switched it to chord duration, didn't seem to change, turned off quantizing. Uh, but what seems to make the big difference here is, you know, how, how many beats is your original performance gonna play for? So if you switch it to just two beats, and this seems to work the best. So you have a short performance, which is quickly gonna shift over to another performance. And, um, so let's give that a try here. So let's unclick that. So we were set up at two beats. And we have two performances on two different sliders, one and two. And now let's uh, have our DAW play these four chords and just shift between the two and practice. That works nice. You can on the fly like say if you had eight sliders, now I could just pick uh, performances that work well together and just kind of on the fly mix them up between them and create a new performance. So let's give that a try and uh, let's turn on MIDI capture. Let's go back to the beginning uh, bar here and let's quickly just create a, you know, a live performance of these uh, two performances, so to speak. So. It'll record it as soon as I move forward. And that's exactly, I think, what we got here. Let's click stop the capture and drag it out uh, to our track. And let's take a look. Now we can turn off Scalar, go to bar one. And you can see the different timings of switching. So 
Yeah, it's very interesting because you, you seem to be able to go you know, just shifting between one performance and the next according to how you want the rhythm of your chord progression. So it's a way to have more control over your performances in kind of a real-time situation. And uh, just like Re uh, Remedy does it, it can come in handy because if you select the right performances and um, practice, you can come up with hybrid performances as you're switching between these different slices, or in this case, performances. All right, so let's uh, quickly do a little modulation test where we have our verse, bridge, and chorus, and we're going to modulate uh, from the verse to the chorus, and we're going to shift to in a different scale. So, and also how to set up that in the uh, editor on different uh, pattern uh, sequences here. So let's just uh, go to modulation. We're currently in C major scale. We want to go to secondary scale, and that's where we're at. And so we tell the wheel of fifths that we simply want to modulate from uh, the verse to the chorus, and the chorus is going to be, let's just grab one, uh, say G major. And so we can say that, all right, we want our first chord to be, in the verse we want our progression to be C major. Now our suggested, suggested modulation pathway gives us these options here. So we could say, well, we're going from to the G major. So just for the sake of speed, we could grab, say, the A minor, which will be our bridge uh, chord, and D chord. And we're going to switch it up later, but these are going to be our uh, bridging chords. And then uh, down here, we have our uh, major scale, so that will be our chorus. So three chords of chorus. So we've gone from C major, bridged, to our chorus. All right, really quick. So let's just go to Edit and kind of set this up now. And of course you'd spend more time at this, but this is how fast the workflow could go if, if that's the way you want to do it. Um, we're going to need uh, three groups. So we have, because we have the verse, the bridge, and the chorus. So let's set it up for performance. So let's say, okay, we know these three chords are going to be uh, verse. Let's add group one for all of them. And um, we could pick any performance uh, that'll be up to you know the person creating the the uh, whole musical idea but we could just say um, pick a phrase and say the first one fine and that will play for all of group one until we change it and then uh, these will be group two so these will both be set to group two which is going to be our bridge as we said and that could be for now the same thing and uh, this will be group three, which will be uh, the chorus. So, I'm sure, these are all in group three. So now we have this set up, and we just again put that for now. So we have uh, the verse, or yes, the verse, the bridge, and the chorus here. And now we can also add patterns. So let's go to the pattern and let's set up for success here by saying, okay, I'm going to add a bunch of new patterns. This is our standard, what we're going to pick from. So we can keep this as default, pattern one, but we know that we want a verse. And double click on here. We know we want a little uh, bridge idea. That'll be there. And we want also a little uh, chorus idea. So we know if we... Um, drag these down here, just Alt-click, so that we know that's the verse. We know this is the bridge. And we know these are going to be the chorus. So now we're set up uh, very nicely here. We can uh, go back to the Edit tab. 
and um, now remember you shifted to the course you're wondering where are the rest of our chords because we're just on the chorus pattern tab now each tab has so you're able to keep everything separate on different pattern bars here and if we want to go back to where we started to keep all our original idea that's still at pattern one so that's a good way to do it now let's talk about um, our, our options here with the scale button if you have phrases and I think rhythms melody sequences uh, you're given the option here anything that can have uh, be scale based so any phrase or I should say any performance that can be scale based will make this option live down here where you can change the scale with this button and that will apply to anything in group one. So all this applies to group one, which you don't have to repeat and set it all up for each of these other groups. So that's that's a great thing. Once you decide what you want for your, you know, your verse, you can just do one group, set it up the way you want, and even have it re-trigger the way you want or follow. And you could change again the scale here the key and the scale, but we've done that nicely through the modulation tab, right? So now we're pretty much set up to test all kinds of different musical ideas. And uh, some of the things that you might want to do, if we just play this one, you might want to, first of all, change to four beats maybe eight beats something that's going to be more musical so maybe let's go four beats and give us longer performances to start with and we'll go back to the start our bars here and then it's just a matter of you know i find that uh doing something special for the bridge bridge section here so you may want to double speed it uh, double time it or you may want to choose to follow into the next with that performance and all these things will give you um, you know different flavors also for the uh, verse or uh, the chorus you may want to um, you know invert maybe the uh, you know the chorus is going to go up inversion wise maybe the bridge is timing wise is going to um, play very quick or very slow but it's going to play repeat it twice so we can put it to half duration but we can say it's going to play two times something to vary the bridge to make it different as because we we have nice bridging chords and we now have a uh, chorus that has been changed by inversion and we have our original verse here so it's all about coming up with something musical now now that you have the mechanics kind of set up and you have all your different verses and choruses set up here so I'm not gonna go through you know the time it's gonna take um, to come up with something that sounds really nice and musical but that's the fun of it you could now just go through and And if you don't like those harsh um, chords, one great way is just, you know, shift it to melody for your verse. Maybe keep the chords on for uh, your little bridge and then back to melody for a nice little chorus ending. So now you don't have the harsh chords. And problem I have up here is I should extend this because it's looping in my DAW so or we can just turn the DAW's looper off Oops. sometimes it takes a while to do that, that little. but yeah so you're kind of set up for success when you have everything in its own category That's, I'd have to work on that quite a bit because the inversions, uh, maybe you want to go two inversions on that. Or The idea is now you could spend hours just trying to 
come up with something that sounds really good. But you have your basic mechanics set up for verse, chorus, and bridge. And I would probably want to change that chord. And you know, the great thing is you have so many tools. Now you could very specifically change that chord. So that's just uh, the video for today. Wanted to go over some of the new tools we have for creating some really interesting, um, you know, chorus verse bridge ideas, modulating the new performance button here, and how you can create any kind of controller to map so you can play in real time different performance ideas. These are all tools that are very helpful um, to getting your musical ideas uh, eventually into your DAW. Hope you enjoyed this video and we shall catch you on the next one.